Hello and welcome uh, to First Post Game Plan. And Indians everywhere in the world, wherever they may be, would be smiling today. India were just pushed to a corner after their loss to Sri Lanka in the Champions Trophy after a few days back. But they came out and thoroughly thumped South Africa to storm in the semi-finals. We discuss uh, India's superb victory uh, and more in this program, which is brought to you by OPPO. I am Dev Dutta Bhattacharji, and I am being joined by IS Memon, noted cricket expert from Delhi, and ex-India international Rohan Gavaskar from England. IS Memon, an all-round performance by India, superb bowling and fielding, and a clinical chase. Uh, what did you make of uh, India's uh, performance today? Well, Debo, it was a commanding performance. There's no doubt about it. Whether batting or bowling or, in fact, fielding, I think India outplayed South Africa in every department. Having said that, for such a crunch match, such an important match, this was, frankly, terribly one-sided. And after the stage, it, you know, it can, you have to force yourself to be interested in the game because it was so one-sided. Uh, there was never any chance of South Africa coming back into the game after they failed to make, I think, about at least 270, 275 would have been at least competitive. Uh, you know, a good total would have been 300 or plus. But uh, for some reason, uh, I, and I thought that South Africa just seemed to lo lose nerve. They lost the toss and they lost their nerve. The, the way they batted was, uh, it was shambolic. And uh, the run outs, the mm -hmm. lack of, you know, the indecisiveness in playing, even running for singles and twos. Normally, you would expect batsmen who can't score boundaries to be rotating the strike, trying to put the bowling side under pressure. Here, it was exactly the other way around, which was, you know, so disheartening to watch from South Africa, which is the number one ranked team in the world. Absolutely. And uh, let me tell the viewers here that uh, India have now won four matches. All the four matches they have played against South Africa in the Champions Trophy. And a yardstick of how, uh, you know, one-sided the match was uh, it can be seen from the fact that South Africa had hit just 11 fours in their innings, but India had hit 21. Uh, Rohan Gavaskar, I'd asked as Memon this earlier, uh, and I'm keen to know your view on this. Uh, were you happy with the team combination that India had today? Umesh Jadav being left out, Ravi Chandran Ashwin coming in. Perhaps one thought, uh, uh, Ravin, uh, you know, uh, Hardik Pandya could have been dropped. But you know, when you see in the hindsight, it looked to be a master stroke of a strategy, and uh, especially after India's victory today. But were you happy with the? combination that India went with today? Yeah, very happy. I thought, uh, look, Hardik Pandya, I know his uh, place in the 11 will always be up for debate, but I think he should be in the 11. He has a lot of balance. He's an outstanding fielder. And as he has a lot of balance to the team. He's in these conditions with his quick bowling. He, he's bowling at about 140. And his ability, uh, you know, to, to be that finisher that India needs in terms of trying to hit uh, big sixes. We saw that in the game against Pakistan. He was promoted ahead of Dhoni uh, and justified his promotion. Look, so I think Hartik Pandya needs to be in the 11. Um, obviously, if you then want to get Ravi Chandra Rashwan, you have to drop a medium pacer and you couldn't drop Bhuvneshwar Kumar. So, unfortunately, Umesh Yadav, who I have to say had an outstanding test season in, in, in India uh, over the last 13 test matches, had to be dropped. But the combination I thought was spot on. I thought the 11 that they picked for this game uh, was spot on. Look, this was as easy a game as India could have hoped. Uh, a virtual quarter final, you're playing against South Africa, the number one ranked team in the world in the ODIs. And uh, it, was, it was honestly a walk in the park, uh, a Sunday morning, afternoon walk in the park for the Indian boys. As Memon, great return uh, to the side for Ravi Chandra Rashwin. Nine overs for 43 runs at that crucial wicket of uh, Hashim Amla. And the way he prized out that wicket, wicket was excellent. Uh, bowling a quicker delivery, just a bit wide. Uh, great return to the team for uh, Ravi Chandra Rashwin. I mean, look, he's, he's perhaps the best spinner in the world today. Uh, it's only a question of whether he fits in into the ODI side when India is playing overseas, when there is a little more dependency on the on the seam bowlers or the fast bowlers. And that's the only reason why he was kept out of the first two games. And when you come up against an opponent like South Africa, always vulnerable against spin. And certainly because they've got four left-handers, so there's, you know, somebody who turns the ball away from the batsman is going to be more effective. That's the conventional theory. And that's what it proved to be. He may not have got a bag full of wickets, 
but he was very effective. And that's what you want from a, a seasoned campaigner like uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin. So it's not about whether he was dropped from the team. I think you, have, you know the, the obvious conclusion one has to draw is that you know the strategy being followed is horses for courses. And I think the Indian selection has been spot on. I share uh, Rohan's point of view about uh, Umesh Yadav. I, you know, it's, it, 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 it can't be a happy moment for him when he's kept out of a playing eleven, having performed brilliantly throughout, I think, over the past 12 months. But again, if there had to be one bowler who had to kind of make way for Ashwin, perhaps that was the right decision to make with no offence meant to anybody. Yeah. Uh, and what perhaps, uh, come to Rohan, what perhaps India did well here in this match was that they won small crucial moments. So let's uh, say, for example, when uh, the amla quinton Decock partnership was blossoming, uh, India uh, got the wicket of Amla and then they got the wicket of uh, A.B. de Villiers to a brilliant run out. And then when they were batting, after the loss of Rohit Sharma, Kohli and uh, Shikhar Dhawan settled all nerves with that great partnership. So India really won crucial, small crucial moments and that did the job for them. What do you think, Rohan? Yeah, I, I think you, you're right. They won the crucial moments. Also, I've got to say it was a complete performance, an all-round performance. Uh, You've got to say the bowlers won the game for India because uh, with the kind of batting lineup that we possess, chasing anything less than 200, honestly, I mean, it's the bowlers who've done the job. Uh, like Ayaz said, uh, a score of 275 would have been competitive. A score of 300, 300 plus would have been a good score. Uh, and having said that, even a score of 300 plus would have been chased. And then when your bowlers go out there and do a job and restrict the opposition to less than 200, uh, You've, if, I, if I was the man of the match, as you indicate, I would give man of the match to the entire bowling unit. I think that's how good they were. But look, even even the fielding, you know, the fielding came under a little bit of criticism um, after the first game against Pakistan. It, it was a little bit shoddy, but uh, they raised the bar again today. The runouts were outstanding. And how often have we seen, you know, you know what really summed up the game for me was the fact that the last wicket was also a run out. You know, there, there was uh, uh, J.P. Dumini trying to farm the strike, not taking singles. And again, miscommunication, going for the second run, sends back a run out. What is going on? I mean, that is schoolboy cricket. I mean, you know what's going on. You know, J.P. Dumini wants to play as many deliveries as he can, not let the number 11 face uh, the bowlers. But again, just uh, it just seemed that uh, South Africa... Uh, forget bringing the A game to the table. They didn't even bring the G, F, uh, L, M, N game. They brought the Z game to the table. It was awful. And uh, South Africa choking again, so they are uh, not being able to shed that choker stag, Rohan. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, you can't, you, you, you can't sugarcoat this. I mean, uh, for me, this was a, this was a choke. Uh, big game, uh, virtual quarterfinal, like we keep saying. You know, lots riding on it. Uh, you get off to a good start. You know, it's not even like, you know, India made inroads early. You get off to a good start, good opening partnership, platforms date, and boom, from there, it's all downhill for South Africa. I mean, uh, 192 all out, come on. I mean, it's, if, you, if you're not going to see what this is and call it a joke, then uh, I'm afraid South Africans are living in, uh, in, a, in a delusional world at the moment. Absolutely. And uh, I remember a watchful start for India when they were batting. 37 runs in the first 10 overs, a bit slow, but uh, Virat Kohli, I mean, uh, he is making a habit of playing these shots in every innings, which are from completely another universe. You know, uh, that shot which stood out in the first ball of the 14th over of Feluk Wayo, when he just uh, came down two steps and hit him over, hit the bowler over his head. Uh, Kohli has given, you know, uh, ensured that every other team uh, who have all are there in the uh, remaining in the tournament have uh, put them in notice with this performance. Well, look, he's an imperious cricketer. He's an imperious batsman. He bats like a monarch. And when he's got his eye in, when his feet are moving well, when he's in good fettle, when he's in good rhythm, there are fewer better batsmen. In fact, maybe there's none in contemporary cricket. So, Virat Kohli batting the way. And he likes to dominate. Like all great batsmen, he wants to leave his stamp on the, on the play, on the passage of play, on the bowlers. He intimidates them through his strokes. And that's, you know, something which we saw even in this inning. He came into this tournament perhaps a shade below his best form, but how quickly he's regained it. And there was, you know, all kinds of theories going around that in English conditions he won't, you know, he won't thrive. But he's put it all behind him. I think this, this really has been, you know, 
much as one talks about the batting, and I, you know, I'll just reinforce what uh, Rohan has said. That this match was effectively won by the bowlers and the fielding. Uh, in the first match, actually, uh, Virat Kohli gave the team six out of ten for fielding when we beat Pakistan, and I thought that was an inflated figure because actually the, in that match we fielded poorly. It, was, it should have been about four out of ten. In this match, from the very first over, the intensity shown on the field by the bowlers, the lines they bowled, the you know the the, the, the stump to stump line. And and the fielding, they cut off the twos, made it into singles. They didn't allow the boundaries. They just stifled stroke players of the caliber of Quinton de Kock and Hashim Amla. And that put you know more worries on the shoulders of the likes of De Villiers, Duplessis, Dumini, and Miller. And that's why you saw. And frankly, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the South Africans seemed to lose nerve and they panicked. The panic was evident in the way they ran between the wickets, and then again in the way they fielded. Because you know, normally the South Africans are the best fielders in the world, and here they were making uh, mistake after mistake after mistake. And one more thing, which this Champions Trophy has told us, is, and certainly where South Africa is concerned, they may be the number one ranked team, but the rankings don't matter if you fail to win titles. Ultimately, you have to have something to show. You have to take some silver silverware back home and put it in your on your mantelpiece. That's what matters really. The rankings are ephemeral. They are here today; they are gone tomorrow. True. And uh, Ron Gavaskar, Shikhar Dhawan is having a purple, going through a purple patch. He may not have the best of times in the past year or so, but put him in the Champions Trophy and he always <laughs> yeah. delivers. So, uh, you know, uh, he is the first Indian batsman to score three back-to-back 50-plus -back scores in the Champions Trophy, the fastest to score 1,000 runs in ICC one-day uh, tournaments. Uh, what can you say about uh, Shikhar Dhawan's innings? Simply superb. Well, you know, Shikhar Dhawan must be hoping that every game he plays is an ICC tournament or is, it's a game with the Champions Trophy. Because like you like you just pointed out, he's been magnificent in the Champions Trophy. He, uh, man of the series last time round. This time round, he's, uh, you know, just like like you said, the IPL. The IPL got him into form. He was out of form uh, before the IPL. The IPL got him into form and he's continued that good form. And he's making it count. Uh, a hundred at two fifties, three consecutive fifties. He's batting really well, and sometimes you know it's not just the runs. Uh, it's not just the runs the batsman scores. It's the way he's batting. He's batting with a lot of confidence. You know his drive through the covers, his flakes. He's he's you know the couple of shots that he played today were absolute slaps. Like swatted the ball on the leg side. So he's he's obviously high on confidence. Uh, his feet are moving well. He's got his you know he's seeing the ball really well. And, you know, the Indian team will be hoping that this continues for another two games at least. Absolutely. And uh, what would be the key areas for India to improve, uh, uh, Rohan Gavaska, uh, if there are any? Uh, after today's game, look, you'd be really harsh and extremely <laughs> critical to say that they need to improve in certain areas. Because, like I said, this was a walk in the park. Magnificent performance by the bowlers. The fielding was superb. And then you win by eight wickets. Uh, so, there's no real room for criticism, really, from any side. I mean... Uh, if anything, you'd look at you'd look at the first game against Pakistan and say yes, the fielding needed to improve, uh, and they've done that. The game against Sri Lanka, you've just got to doff your hat and say, look, you know what, the Sri Lankans played better than us on the day. Uh, it was a really good performance from the Sri Lankan batsmen. They did the job. Angelo Matthews was cool, calm, collected towards the end, used his experience, made sure his team got over the line. And and in a sport, sometimes the opposition will play better than you, and 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 that's what that's why we love the sport. Uh, so, if anything, throughout this tournament, if there was one area that they needed to improve, it was the fielding after the first game. And they've done that. Uh, the fielding has been has been superb. So, look, the Indian team will be hoping that they continue in this form. I mean, they've set the bar, they've set the standard. They will not want to let, let those standards slip. Um, obviously, if you can improve a little bit here and there, you know, in terms of batting, uh, in terms of, you know, maybe, you know, the fielding, they will. But uh, all in all, today was a complete performance. Absolutely. We are uh, towards the end of the program. We're running short of time. Ayaz Memon, uh, quickly, uh, I saw your uh, tweet after the match. You said it was a disappointingly one-sided match, but let me assure you, it won't be a uh, disappointingly uh, one-sided match in the semi-final against Bangladesh, especially uh, knowing the fact that Bangladesh would be looking to exact revenge for their loss in the 2015 uh, World Cup and they're in good form as well. Look, I don't know whether they're wanting to exact revenge or not, but right now I think they're already celebrating in Dhaka and everywhere else in Bangladesh. For them to reach the semi-finals was a big achievement. 
and you know i think that india need to be a little on their guard because bangladesh had nothing to lose at all you know they reach this far has been a mighty achievement if they get past india my god i can't imagine what will be the state in, in that country after that so and they've got some really good talent they've got grit they've got verb uh, they are young team and as i mentioned earlier they have nothing to lose everything to gain so india better watch out you know the underdogs can always bring a surprise yeah absolutely and uh, this is india's fifth consecutive semi final appearance in icc events events which is the joint second most or joint second best streak rather for any team uh, that's all that we have for the moment in this special program which was brought to you by oppo i thank both my guests ayush memon and rohan gavaskar and leave all you indian fans with uh, a great victory to cherish till we meet again take care and goodbye